This week, let's learn about sampling distributions with your instructor, Dr. Todd King. Well, thank you and welcome. We have made it to week 12 and we're talking about sampling distributions in our business statistics course. This week, we're going to get started with talking about the standard error of the mean. Now, the standard error of the mean is a lot like a standard deviation. And you may recall that a standard deviation, with a, when we're dealing with a sample, measures the average amount of variability between any raw score and the sample mean that's reasonable to expect by chance. And you can see from the formula that the, it is the square root of the sum of all the raw scores minus the mean. So we take each raw score, subtract the mean, add up those differences, divide by n minus 1, take the square root of that. That gives us the standard deviation. So this is a measure of the variability around the mean in a sample. But last week we learned about the distribution of sample means. And we learned that when we did that experiment where everyone had the same data set, but we used the randomized function in Excel to select 30 cases. The 30 cases were our samples. Each sample had a mean and a standard deviation. And then we theorized what would happen if everyone did the same experiment, we took the mean of every one sample and we created a distribution of those sample means. They, each sample would have a mean, but it would also have a standard deviation, which we call the standard error of the mean. It measures the average amount of variability between a sample mean and the population mean that is reasonable to expect by chance, equivalent to the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. And it is sigma divided by the square root of n. So as we explore the standard error in sample size, one thing that's really important to remember is that our sample size will influence the amount of error in our sample. We're going to use our sample to estimate the population. So minimizing the error could really be important. As our sample size increases, the standard error decreases. And what I want to do is prove this to you, or more accurately, have you prove it to yourself. And to do that, we're going to use an Excel tutorial that I've created for you. It's Sampling Distributions Week 12. There's two tabs in this particular Excel spreadsheet. We're going to start with the first of them, which is the SEM tab, the Standard Error of the Mean tab. So here we are. We're on our first tab, which is the Standard Error of the Mean. You'll notice that we have sample sizes, a sample size of 1, 2, 3, 4. And if you scroll down, you see this goes all the way down to 100. We also have a column for B where we're going to calculate the error. Well, the error is sigma divided by the square root of n, and sigma, our standard deviation in this case, is 15. This 15, this box is going to stay right where it is while we do some calculating. So the first thing that we need to do is put your cursor in cell B3, and let's type the formula. It is equal sign. F3, that's the location of our standard deviation, and then let's anchor that using either Command T on Mac or F4 on Excel. So we've put the dollar signs around that formula. Divided by the square root, SQRT, of the sample size, we'll start with A3. Enter, and now we've created our first error. And you will notice that with a sample size of 1, the standard error of the mean is exactly the same as the standard deviation of 15. Having selected this error, let's double click on that box in the lower right corner and it will copy our formula down our list of sample sizes, completing the formulas. Before you click anywhere else, leave these errors selected because we want to create a line graph for the errors. So now go to insert under the line graphs, choose the first one, which simply says line. And this will create a graph. You can also resize this chart by dragging in the lower right corner, 
resizing it, making it easier to see. What we're interested in is minimizing error. And you'll notice that early on in this graph, adding one, two, three, four cases, the amount of error drops dramatically. It's in free fall. It goes straight down until it gets to some level, which is really around maybe 15 is where the, where the bottom of that curve is. And if you trace this out, if you hover your cursor over that blue line, you'll see that around a sample size of 30, the line has become flat across the bottom of our curve. And that means that adding 10 cases or 20 cases decreases the error slightly, but not very much. In this example, I've used a standard deviation of 15, but what I'd like you to do is play with this number a little bit. Uh, change that standard deviation of 15 to 30 and see what happens to your line graph. And what you will notice is that the shape of the graph does not change, only the x and y axis. You can also change that standard deviation to 100 or to 6. And you will find that in each case, only the x and y axis change, the shape of the curve will stay consistent. Now I want to apply this very same idea using some data that's also in this Excel spreadsheet that you're working in. It's the ICU data. This is a set of cases that are drawn from an intensive care unit in a hospital. And the variable that we're interested in right now is the age variable. So we have 4,194 cases. The average age is 64.96 which I was able to calculate because we have the raw data. The standard deviation, 16.95, and we're gonna choose some sample sizes of 30. Well, why 30? Because the medical director believes that the sample mean will be an acceptable estimate of the population mean if the sample mean is within two years of the population mean. What is the probability that the sample mean computed using a simple random sample of 30 patients will be within two years of the population mean. We are looking for values between 62.96 and 66.96. That's our probability range that we're most interested in. We have an error of a 3.09. We're going to calculate this. You'll see this appear in our spreadsheet. And we will see what happens when we change our sample size, what happens to that error, and then what happens to our probability estimates. Go to the Normal Distribution Z multi-tool that I've provided for you, and we are going to be working in the Z formula tab. In this spreadsheet, the second tab in green says the Z formula, and if you scroll down a little, you will see some boxes. They're red and orange. We're going to use box number six, the red box. That is the sampling distribution for the mean. We need to enter the data that we already know. So we'll start with the mean. We know the mean is 64.96. The standard deviation is 16.95. We also know our sample size, which is 30. And after we've entered that information, we can enter specific values. In this case, we want two years younger than the mean, that value will be 62.96. Now, as we enter that value, you will see that we already get probabilities for less than or equal to 62.96 and greater than or equal to 62.96. Now, let's enter the second value for our range, which is two years older than the mean, 66.96. We enter that in the X2 box. And now we get the probabilities for the 66.96, including probabilities of the range between 62.96 and 66.96. And we see that the probability of the age being within two years of the mean using a sample size of 30 is a 0.4819. Well, that sample size of 30 might be a good start, but what if we took a larger sample size? What if we minimized the error? 
What would that do to our estimate? Well, we're going to try that. So now the question is, what is the probability that a sample mean computed using a simple random sample of 100 patients will be within two years of the population mean? Well, let's return to our Excel spreadsheet. And you can see the box where we have entered 30 as our sample size. That's the box that we're going to change. And when we do that, pay attention to the probabilities between the X1 and X2 values. Right now it's at 48.19. Let's change our N from 30 to 100. Click anywhere in the spreadsheet and our probabilities will be recalculated. Now the probability of the sample mean being within two years of the population mean is 0 0.7620 or 76.2% of the time we will get a sample mean within two years of the population mean. So what do we see from that? Larger sample size decreases the amount of error in our sample estimate, gives us a much better estimate of the population mean. We have an N of 30, giving us a standard error of 3.09. Because the sampling distribution with N of 100 has a smaller standard error, in this case 1.7, the values of the mean, the sample mean, have less variability and tend to be closer to the population mean than the values of the sample mean with N equals 30. Well, what can we conclude from this information? First of all, when it comes to sample size, bigger is better. The minimum sample size that we want to shoot for, the one that is recommended in all the statistics textbooks, is a sample size of 30. Because after a sample size of 30, we have pretty well minimized the amount of error in the standard error of the mean, giving us a much better estimator, our sample, to our population. We will use the standard error of the mean as the denominator in a z-test, which we will learn about in the next block of lectures.